Hello, everyone. My name is Marco Minghini. Uh, I'm from Italy. I'm happy to uh, chair this session of the academic track and to introduce uh, the next uh, uh, speakers. We have three speakers for this uh, talk, and they are Carla Rodriguez, that is a biologist, Elvis Acevedo, also a biologist, and uh, Elisa Frank Bus, uh, a natural resources engineer. Uh, in 2020, they were partners in the Master in Special Information Applications dictated at the Gulich Institute of the National Commission for Space Activities uh, and the National University of Cordoba in Argentina. And from that experience, we see uh, this work, and this work was born. The title is Remote Sensing and Modeling Tools, Exploration for Habitat Delimitation of Lysmaniasis Transmitting Vectors. I will now play uh, the video, and then you will have time to ask questions. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to ask uh, questions um, for the authors using uh, the questions tab in Venulus. Thank you. Hello, everybody. We are going to speak about remote sensing and modeling tools exploration for habitat limitation of Leishmaniasis transmitting vectors. Next. Leishmaniasis is a vector borne parasitic disease. The parasites that produce it are from the genus Leishmania. It is transmitted by hematophagous sunflies, similar to mosquitoes, and affects both humans and other vertebrates. And the causes of lemaniasis are related to changes in environmental conditions, as deforestation or climatic changes. The World Health Organization has characterized lemaniasis as a reemerging and uncontrolled disease. In relation to this disease, it is important to know the environmental conditions, conditions necessary for vectors and their distribution, to be conscious of the risks, of where the risk is. With respect to the causes of leishmaniasis, it is necessary to identify where changes in land cover are happening. Next. In this context, to know the distribution of the vector that transmits leishmaniasis, researchers model their ecological niches. A popular software to do this is Maxence. Maxence works with the maximum entropy principle and, and produces occurrence probability models. It uses uh, samples, uh, sampling data of species location related to environmental variables as temperature or precipitation. As I said before, in relation with the causes of leishmaniasis, it is important to know where land changes are happening, and it is possible using geomatic techniques. Next. With the idea to study leishmaniasis, we propose two objectives. The first one says, Model the occurrence probability of five sunflies species of sanitary interest for South America from a bibliographic compilation of sunfly presence records from the last 10 years. And we did it using Maxent. And the second objective was analyze the changes that happen in the vegetation around the town in the province of Jujuy, Argentina, where a leishmaniasis outbreak occurred during 2017 and 2018. And to do this, we explore different software and programming languages. Next. Well, the occurrence probability models were generated to, for South America. However, the study area of this work corresponds to Argentina. More precisely, to the north and central region of the country. The first Argentinian cases of leishmaniasis, of cutaneous leishmaniasis, were reported in this region. In addition, an area of particular interest was chosen around the town of Caimancito, where there was a leishmaniasis outbreak in 2017 uh, 2018. This town is in the north of the country, and this area was selected to analyze and try to detect a land cover changes that could be associated with the Leishmaniasic outbreak. In this figure, we can see different points um, of the five more relevant sunlight species and their records. Next. 
Okay, about that proceeding, we use phlebotomine uh, data and environmental variables, and Sunflight data presents a present database based on an exhaustive review of world literature, 19 climatic variables of the Chelsea model, and a digital elevation model of all South America, obtained from the USGS. We also use um, remote sensing data, Sentinel-2 images um, from the Copernicus Open Access Hub, obtained in December 2015 and 2018 with 10 meters of resolution, and 16 days NDBI MODIS images from the app years, um, obtained in January 2010 to 2019 with 250 meters of resolution. Next. About data analyze, uh, this was divided in two parts. For the probability of occurrence models, we use MaxEnd with different parameters, such as logistic type output, 10,000 pseudo-absent samples and cross-validation considering 10 replications. And for the analysis of land cover changes, we use the difference of the NDBI index with Sentinel-2A images with Python and QGIS software, and a time series analysis from MODIS NDBI with a non-parametric method of local regression with our software. Next. Now I'm going to introduce the first part of the results. Okay, here we can see um, the occurrence probability maps of the five most, most important sunlight species in Argentina. At the bottom right of each map is the results of the distribution model for South America. It can be observed that for four species analyzed, such as Evandromia complex, Migonemia migonei, Nitsomia nemai, and Lutsomia longipalpus, the occurrence probability was distributed in the north of the region, in the north region of the country. The first three uh, show a higher probability in the center and northwest. Uh, while Lutsomia longipalpus is focused in the northeast of the country. On the other hand, uh, it is observed that Nitsomia with money has a low occurrence probability in Argentina with values of 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 in the northeast. However, um, it has a higher occurrence in the rest of South America in particular in Brazil, where uh, more records were obtained. Next. Well, in this table, we have the relative contributions of environmental variables to the maximum models of the five relevant sunflight species in this study. The variable that contributed the most to the models was the temperature seasonality BO4 in almost all the species, uh, except for Lutsomia longipalpis, that was the elevation the variable that contributed the most, followed by, uh, by BO4 or temperature seasonality. Um, other variables that show important contributions to the models was minimum temperature of coldest months, or BO6, temperature annual range, BO7, mean temperature of water water, BO8, and precipitation of warmer quarters, BO18. On the other hand, some variables such as isothermality, BO3, mean temperature of coldest water, BO11, a precipitation of wettest month, BO13, and precipitation seasonality, BO15, uh, did not contribute uh, to the models of any of the five species.
So uh, here are the rock or receptor operator characteristic cross validation curves and the average AOC values for all these species that allow us to determine the global precision level of the occurrence probability models uh, by a sensitivity versus one minus a specificity that is the fractional predictive area analysis. So the AOC is a value that measures the prob probability that the random samples for a species point uh, present place will be ranked higher than a randomly chosen point. Uh, that means a pseudo absence in this case. So the highest precision for the species uh, was obtained for Nisomia nevi with 0.987 87, uh, also value and a uh, standard deviation of 0 0.008. And the lowest one was in Insomnia with money with 0.858 of AOC and uh, a standard deviation of 0 0.015. In turn, Lutzomia longipalpis presented the highest variability of all the models with a standard deviation of 0.234. But in general, the models for the five species presented a acceptable to high performance according to this metric. Um, this graph uh, also were useful for the validation in uh, uh, using the sensitivity sta statistic or fraction of true positives also, the statistic called uh, omission rate, that is one minus sensitivity, indicates a fraction of false positives. So, the sensitivity values for all the models in general was uh, were high, but except for Nisomia with money, which reaches a high sensitivity value at 0.5 uh, of fractional prediction area. This can be observed in the Insomnia with Money uh, model map uh, in Argentina because in the north of the country, point of presence of the species were detected in the eastern part, but uh, the occurrence probability assigned by the model was very low. So in this case, the true positives are being missing. Then we have the shame vector obtained from the difference between uh, the NDVI of uh, 2015 and 2018. The red color shows the decrease in NDVI and the light blue color uh, shows the increase. Here we have the calculation with the threshold to identify the negative chains and the positive chains. The results shown the largest percentage of the area did not show chains between uh, these two years, but the decrease in NDVI was greater than the increase in the analysis period. The results also shown that 4.11% of the area has a decrease in NDVI. It could indicate that there was a decrease in vegetation in the study period and this change event could have influenced the leishmaniasis outbreak between 2017 and 2018 in Caimancito town. Uh, that Due to the human uh, activities, uh, like advanced jungle areas, generating an overlap between the wild and the domestic cycle of the disease. Uh, then we made a visual selection of a small deforested area and a non-deforested area as a control and inside the region analysis before to find the possible date that the deforestation uh, activities could have occurred. Uh, this graphic show both time series for the deforested and non deforested area respectively for the period 2010 and 2018. When applying this Moody's, in Moody lowest no uh, local regression, to the time series, it can be observed uh, that the trend for the deforested area has a decrease in NDVI that is uh, not shown in the in the trend to the non deforested area.
relation to the conclusion of this work, we can say that uh, occurrence probability models are an important contribution to determine the risk of leishmaniasis. And with respect to the species distribution, the Somia longipalpis was found in the northeast of Argentina and related to the kind of leishmaniasis that is visceral leishmaniasis. And the others, Nisoma, Nisomia neibai, the Madromia complex, and Migonemia migonei, were found in the northwest of the country, are related to cutaneous leishmaniasis. That is a different kind of leishmaniasis. Respect to Nisomia with money, we did not obtain a good model. Uh, we know from bibliography that Maxence works better with few samples, and we had many samples for Nisomia with money. And the samples were in Brazil, so the model was not good for Argentina. About the use of Maxent, uh, it can be recommended to implement some other metrics apart from the AUC to validate the model, because the AUC is related to the specificity evaluation, which really is on uh, the background point that are not real absence. And also other variables can be implemented for the model, for example, NDVI or slope, but it is better when the area is more limited and not so large as the area that we, we use. Next. With respect to the change detection, we cannot say that the outbreak of Leishmaniasis, of Leishmaniasis in Caimancito, Jujuy was related to the deforestation we found. Uh, we need more local information to do that, uh, for example, information about people activities or travel in the area. But we can say that uh, there are land cover changes in the area and it increased the risk of leishmaniasis. Uh, to improve this analysis, it will be possible to try other software that allow uh, easily the relation of spatial data with uh, temporal data or uh, maybe it is possible to use images with a better spatial resolution to detect changes in the surrounding of the town to then identify, for example, uh, a land change because of the construction of a new neighborhood. And always it is recommended to validate the models with field data. Next. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Let me add all of you to the stream. Okay, here we are. Thanks a lot for the presentation uh, and for the research. Uh, I have to say this is one of the uh, pieces of research I like the most because you basically use a lot of uh, different phosphor G technologies uh, and apply them in a domain that is, if, if we want to say like that, a, a non-traditional or a less traditional one. So thanks for that because you show us what it is actually possible to do with uh, our uh, beloved Phosphor-G software. We have questions uh, from the audience and I will immediately go uh, to the first one. Um, which proportion of records you use for validation? A typical question uh, uh, for, for modeling exercises. Whoever wants to uh, reply, feel free to take the floor. Uh, sorry, you let me unmute. Um, okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, well, uh, we use uh, the parameters that are by the by default in the Maxent software, and I think that it was uh, 70, 30, uh, 30 for validation of all the data. As it was um, an exploratory analysis, well, we decided to use that, but maybe other values are will be better. Thank you, and I will go with the next one that is again about uh, uh, the model and the output. So how many records of Nisomia did you find and could the number of records affect the modeling output? Well, I also answer, oh, maybe Jet Shelby's want to. No, I wanted to, to add some something to the the last question, it was the, the param by parameters that we use, but we use also 10 replicas of cross-validation. And for the next question, um, 
the the second part yes it can affect uh, we can see in some part of brazil for example uh, we have a lot of records so uh, some of the models uh, of the species uh, we have a agreed uh, uh, pro probability occurrence probability so it can affect uh, yes Thank you. I hope this answers uh, the, the question. Um, next one uh, is not about the output, but about the input of the model. Have you explored the GBIF database for SendFly records? Well, no, uh, we don't know what it is, but uh, we got the records from uh, the bibliography search that we did. Uh, someone uh, gave us uh, a lot of uh, uh, registration of, of uh, paper about leishmaniasis and we uh, choose there um, what had uh, presence uh, records and what uh, the, the papers that give the, the location of the, the presence to use it in the, in the model. Thanks a lot. I just see from a quick search, this is a, a, an open access database to biodiversity data. So you might uh, want to explore it uh, further in the in the future. Um, we have one additional question, but in the meantime, I still invite the audience to ask more um, questions if they wish so. Uh, the question is the following. Uh, is it possible that deforestation might indeed be sugar cane that was harvested? Well, uh, we get a lot of changes in the area, and some of them uh, were related with crops uh, in the, also in the area. I'm not sure if it is only sugar cane, but uh, we then, uh, after uh, to get the change vector, vector we uh, did a more detailed search in the area and uh, found an area that uh, got a deforestation, a real deforestation. We check also it with other images. Thank you. Um, I do not see additional questions, but uh, I will uh, uh, still ask uh, the audience to uh, ask if they uh, have any. Um, in the meantime, let me just add that uh, there is, as usually, a paper, because this is a, a presentation um, within the academic track of the FOSPOR G2021 conference. Uh, the paper is published in the ISPRS archives. Uh, there is also a repository, if I am not wrong. This is what I found on your paper. Maybe can you say something more about what uh, 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 people can find in this uh, repository? Um, and in the meantime, uh, we can also paste the, the link in the chat. Well, uh, the repository is uh, 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 not good at all. It's uh, a kind of proof that we did uh, to 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 as an approximation of reproductivity in in research, and uh, well, there are the 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 scripts that we use in Python and also in R uh, for the different analysis, and we are working, uh, but particularly me, I I I working in the in the repository uh, all the time, changing things to 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 improve this. And what we have just said uh, uh, greatly relates to the last question that has appeared in the meantime. Do you plan to continue the research in this topic? I guess the answer is uh, yes, but uh, up to you to, to elaborate more. Well, uh, uh, not in my case, because I, I do not work uh, with epidemi epidemiology, but maybe my, my colleagues can answer better this question. Yes, I would like to, to continue with this. It, it has a lot of of topics to to continue to investigate. So I would like uh, in uh, landscape epidemiology in general. So I could. Yes. Super. Me too. Um, landscape epidemiology is my 
area of interest. So I think that is. Super. Th th thanks a lot to um, uh, to you all. Um, so this is uh, also good for uh, speakers, for users, and for attendees of Foscore G that want to uh, further approach you. Uh, please do that. Uh, you you can look for the uh, speakers in Venueless, or you can contact them um, privately. I have to uh, share with you the the fact that uh, a lot of applauses have already come in Venueless. Uh, if uh, you like the talk, uh, and I'm I'm speaking to the audience, please. Uh, uh, let the speakers uh, know uh, in venueless. Uh, with that, I think we can close the session. Um, thanks again to uh, the three speakers and thanks also to the audience for your precious um, feedback and uh, input uh, to the discussion. And I wish you all a good uh, continuation of Oscar G 2021. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.